What's going on guys in the works and today we're going to be talking about the newest vehicle in the China Rising DLC, the Bomber. Now how many of you guys have heard that weird little siren going off on the China Rising maps and have no clue what it's for? Well oddly enough it's actually for the Bomber. It's letting you know hey the Bomber is ready to go and it's usually on a point that's C or D. It depends on the map and it depends on if you're playing Conquest Large or Conquest Small, but it's usually the central point, the contested point where you can go into like a little command center and call in a bombing run. And you can see it's a very slow approach. You have a lot of time to sit there and think about where you want to drop your bombs. And you've got two different types of bombs. You've got the JDAMs by default, and then you can actually unlock the cruise missile, which is an assignment, and we'll talk a little bit about that towards the, the middle of the video. But let's talk about these JDAMs, because they're the same as the ones on the jets, but a lot of people don't like them. I, when the China Rising DLC first dropped, a lot of people were like, oh, these are useless. They only have the, you know, the splash radius of a nade, which is true, but they're a precision bomb. And I actually enjoy it. A lot of times if you have a tank or an AA camping in the back that's giving you problems, you can take them out with a couple JDAMs, no problem. Now I tend to overload. If I see a tank camping, I tend to surround them with JDAMs. I try to get a couple on them, and then maybe a couple behind them, because typically if they do get warned by like a commander or something like that, they'll just back up a little bit. A lot of players don't really try to uh, pay attention to the commander, I've noticed, because I've played a lot of commander, and let me tell you guys, I've given it a lot of evac orders, and I would say about 75% of the time, they just completely ignore it. So, JDAMs are a precision bomb. You want to place them in an area where you know someone is camping and not typically going to move otherwise you will not get the kill because uh, there is a delay from when you place the bomb and when it actually fires so keep that in mind when choosing your targets but stationary targets are always the way to go or if you can predict where someone's going that's always a smart move now cruise missile everyone wants to know how do you unlock the cruise missile on this freaking bomber because I've seen a ton of questions about that on videos I've seen a lot of people talking about it on the battle log forums well it's actually kind of tricky you've got to do two assignments first is the safe rating and then you've got to do the mother of all bombs assignment and safe rating will get you the SUAV the mother of all bombs will then unlock and you have to get 15 bomber kills and destroy one bomber and you see me trying to do it here with stingers Definitely not the way to go. You're going to want to hop in the AA and wait for the alert the same enemy bomber deployed. That will let you know when it's in the sky. Typically it follows the same pattern depending on what map you're on, so just predict where it's coming from, wait for it, and it's pretty easy to shoot down. Now I would avoid doing any sort of lock-on uh, with your missiles. Just sit there and use your main cannon and take it down like that because it does have a lot of flares. This thing is just a flare machine. And it's a lot easier to sit there and just use your main cannon on it, grind it down, and eventually it'll blow up and you will unlock your mother of all bombs assignment, giving you the cruise missile. Now, this is going to be a disappointment, but the cruise missile is very similar to the way the commander's is. You only get one per run, and it's really only good if you find a stationary tank. Uh, or if you find a point where a lot of people are grouped up, that's where the cruise missile comes into play. And you just switch to it, it is your secondary thing, you've got your JDAMs and you've got your cruise missile. So you do have to be kind of smart about where you place your cruise missile. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do as you see me get destroyed there in the bombing run. Uh, you can see I'm kind of stuck in that. That's one of the things that happens in this when you get destroyed. You kind of get stuck in limbo there. I thought I'd show this, see if anyone else had experienced the same thing. Uh, you can actually jam E a bunch of times and eventually it'll kick you out of it. But in summary, I really think the JDAMs are a little bit more useful than the cruise missile. The cruise missile is tricky to unlock, uh, but like I, like I said, you've only got one, and you've got to be smart about where you place it, because if you place it in the wrong spot, you know, let's say you pick a tank and it backs up like five feet, you're most likely not going to get a kill, whereas with the JDAMs, you can usually get... You know, if you're lucky, if you use them right as you spawn in, you can put a, a grouping of four hit a tank, disable it, put another grouping of four, hit it, hit it again and destroy it. Because um, even if you're missing it, you're, doing, you're still doing a little bit of splash damage to it. And if you're lucky on some of the bigger maps, you can get out three rounds of your JDAMs. If you're on like some of the smaller maps like Peaks um, or even Dragon's Pass, sometimes that you've only really got room for two, two little clusters of them. But uh, this clip right here is my best bombing run ever. This is going to be, this is going to blow your mind on how many, how many tanks I get with this. I actually end up getting two tanks 
with one clusters of Jadan. Um, like I said, this thing is not as bad as a lot of people have been saying it is. I actually find it to be very useful. Especially in those games where you've got the AA just camping because usually you can pop off a couple rounds of JDAMs before they actually take you down because this thing is a tank. Uh, it's a little bit more durable than the AC-130 so you will stay up a little bit longer. Uh, but it's very useful for precision attacks and that's what I think the bomber was really for. A lot of people expected it to be like a carpet bombing. I know that's how I was expecting it at first when I first heard about it. But I kind of like the way it is. I think it adds an interesting dynamic to it. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think that this is actually a useful addition to a game? I know a lot of people seem to be on the fence about it. They don't really see it as being that useful. And look at that right there. I know the kill feed shot through it really quick. But I destroyed two tanks at the end there in that bombing run. Uh, for like 870 points right there. So that was pretty cool. I thought that was a really cool clip. Uh, it proves that if you get them in the right area, you can get a lot of kills as I, I like to, to rub it in right there. Uh, you can get a lot of kills with, with your bombing run. So let me know what you guys think about this particular addition to the game. Do you think it's useful? Or do you think it's a gimmick? I think it's better than the AC-130. I think it's much more balanced and it actually has a use. But if you missed my past videos, here's a chance to catch up and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.